So today is the day that the Switch Lite has released to retail stores, and I picked up two of them. Now, this right here is the gray one. That's gonna be the one that is my main system that, I, that I'm gonna be using going forward alongside of the regular Switch. But I also picked up a turquoise switch that's going to be our teardown model that I'm going to take apart and we'll try to figure out a bunch of stuff going on in there. This is just my unboxing for my switch, the, the switch light, the gray one. And on the main channel, we'll have a full teardown and we'll do all of that. And it should be really interesting to see what's going on in there. But I wanted to kind of share my unboxing of this and my first initial impressions because that's uh, something I've been waiting to see for a while is this Switch Lite since they announced it, what, a, like a, a month and a half or so, two months ago. Uh, the one thing I'll give Nintendo credit for is they like to announce their stuff very close to release. So while it feels like it's been a while, it really hasn't been too long since they announced it. So let's go ahead and get this guy, uh, let's get this guy out of here. But let's take a look at the box very quickly. We have, uh, of course, the gray switch on the front here. They also had a yellow and a turquoise model, Switch Lite. And then on the top, Nintendo, Switch Lite, Switch Lite, and then the back of the switch. So we see the front and the back. A pretty standard box. It is much, much smaller than the regular Switch box. So uh, it definitely appears, at least at retail, when you walk in there to the store and you look at it, that it is like the uh, smaller shrunken down setup. And that, I think that the reasoning obviously is, is to appear that way. But of course, it's also missing quite a bit of stuff that the regular Switch has, including Joy-Con controllers, a dock, a grip, uh, all that stuff. So let's go ahead and open this guy up. We're gonna start here. We'll kick this guy open. I expect there not to be much in here, obviously, because again, you can see it's just it's just the system. It should be a charger, which is, it's good to see that Nintendo is, is getting back to doing chargers with their handheld only systems after the 3DS, but the 2DS, uh, new 2DS XL, put them over the top there. So here's the switch, let me put that to the side very quickly. And it looks like they have just instruction manuals and paperwork, of course, and then we have, a charger, the standard brick that is in, uh, that comes with your regular switch. That's exactly what this should be, but I'll take a quick look at it. Looks to be the same. It is funny to see again, like this large brick that comes with your handheld, uh, but that's just the way, uh, that's just the way they have it set up. Um, yes, it's the same 15, 15 volt, 2.6 amp. So same as what we've had before. Now let's, uh, let's look at this guy. This, this is, uh, this is actually pretty light. I know that's obviously a play on words there, but it looks, it feels nice. So the thing about the regular Switch is it, it it's multiple pieces, right? This, this is all one piece, this feels good. So I grabbed my regular Switch as well, and you can see the size comparison here. Uh, it is a good bit smaller. It's almost, I almost wanna say it's, yeah, so it is, I, I heard this before when during previews, but it is basically the size of your Switch minus one Joy-Con. So take a Joy-Con controller off the side of one of your Switch, either side, that is pretty much the exact, at least uh, width of the, of the Switch Lite. And then it is a little shorter as well. And a little, uh, actually it might be about the same thickness Maybe slight, actually slightly thinner, I would say. Um, but yes, it is It is a, a good bit smaller in the hands. And because it doesn't have Joy-Cons on the side, if you kind of move your Switch around, you could feel the Joy-Cons obviously kind of shifting in the rails that they sit in. And that was always something that kind of like, you would notice it wasn't really worth complaining about because we understood what they were going for there. But this, this is all one piece. Also the joysticks feel the same. They might be a little, there might be a little more tension actually these joysticks. We're we're checking those out obviously when uh when I when I ripped the other one apart and we checked that out. That's going to be one of the big things to take a look at. But looking around the system, I noticed that the vents on the side here, so on the top, they are smaller like they're basically thinner here and it almost feels like the plastic is just harder. Now, here's the thing about the regular switch, the original this is very, these vents are very wide and the plastic going between them is, is very thin. So that's why you would always get this breakage going on here and it's two separate pieces. And that would always really throw it off and it kind of creases right around the vent. Whereas with the Switch Lite, it's, it looks like the front has its own piece essentially, but it doesn't actually wrap around the vents. The vents much, much stronger. You actually feel it if you tap it much stronger there. So that's that's 
actually really nice. You shouldn't have any breakage then right here. And honestly, you probably won't have any warping or anything as it's not going in a dock. It doesn't work dock. So you're not gonna have any like serious heat issues or anything with it there. It's gonna run kind of on like a, obviously a lower, lower power. This, okay, so ABXY is exactly what I thought it would be. Remember we looked at the, the FCC filings and we found that it appeared to have similar sponginess as the Pro Controller. And that is correct there. It is not clicky. Like you, you get, you can hear the clicking with that guy. You can hear it. It's, it's, it's basically like the Pro Controller, uh, which is, I actually prefer. I kind of like the feeling of that over clicky buttons. You can still kind of get a nice click out of it if you move it around. Uh, joysticks, again, are a little more, feels like the tension is a little higher on them. The D-pad is, is spongy as well. It's not, it doesn't have, it's not tactile or anything, not clicky. It feels good though. You know what, the D-pad, okay, it feels good. Uh, I'm gonna have to look a little more into it and actually use it, but first impressions of the D-pad are okay. It's not as good as like the NES Classic, for example, that one, that D-pad, or even the Super Nintendo Classic, but it's still pretty solid, I would say, for, for what it is. Uh, but again, uh, more testing and everything. I haven't even turned this thing on yet. Everything at top is clicky. We have tactile volume buttons there. And then we also have our power button game cart slot here with the headphone jack next to it. Everything you would expect. Now on the back, of course, we are missing our kickstand. So instead they have this little flap here that would open up and that's where you would put in your SD card. And then the one interesting change that I didn't like as much when I saw in previews is that the speakers are located on the bottom here. And I feel like that is going to give us a uh, lower sound than what we have here, which of course we have speakers on the front that point out at you. So that, that's gonna be an interesting thing to see. Let me go ahead and power this guy on because I wanna at least take a quick look at the screen just to see if uh, how everything looks there, if, it, if I notice any obvious differences in terms of it being brighter or warmer or anything there, cooler even. Now the, the switch that I was comparing to has, there we go. Uh, let me turn this down. Has, a, uh, has the newer screen, I guess the newer screen uh, in it. So it is warmer than the old one. This, let me turn it on next to it so I can see. So looking at the two screens blown out completely as bright as possible, the camera I know is blown out right now, but I, I wanted to give it as bright a look as I can. I do see the newer switch here being warmer than the current switch or switch light. This one looks warmer. So I don't know if they have a uh, different brand in here or anything for the screen. Uh, but it does not look as like yellow tinted, I guess is the word for it. Uh, but it is bright. It looks pretty much the same brightness, maybe maybe slightly brighter, but uh, overall the screen looks sharp. It, lo it looks good. It looks very good. I, I, I like the way the screen looks right now. I'm at to play obviously some games with it to see how the colors look and everything on it. Let me go ahead and uh, turn this guy off and this guy off since we're blowing out the camera right now. Uh, but so far, you know what? I like the feeling of this guy. It, it feels solid as the thing. Like if I kind of bend it around in my hand a bit, it doesn't move like the Joy-Cons do. Um, the joysticks feel good. I think you're still gonna have some slight ergonomic issues here with the joystick where you kind of get that claw hand, right? But it does appear to be a bit more Vita-like. And this is their obvious, uh, I think I think personally, their, their, uh, their 3DS successor straight up. But so far, you know what? Initial impressions are good. Now there's still a lot to learn when it comes to the Switch Lite, which we'll be doing in another video with the turquoise Switch. But if you were curious about the gray one, it looks pretty good in person, has like a matte finish all the way around. Uh, the Switch logo on the back is uh, a bit more glossy and you can feel it if you run your finger across it but I do like the gray look to it. I think it's very subtle. I do wish that they had come up with a, maybe a different way to do the bezel in the front. They're trying to hide it. And they, they have, of course, it just gray underneath. So basically the digitizer on the front, I guess just goes over that. And I, they're trying to hide it, but it, you can still see it. And it still doesn't look as good as if they just shrink the bezel down like as thin as possible. But I guess it's a good attempt at what is at this time a, the cheapest entry point into the Switch family. And yes, it's technically a family of systems now and it makes you wonder 
what else could be coming up. But hey, so far so good. I'll have a full review on the Switch Lite later on down the road as I get time to play with it. But these were my initial impressions with feeling and everything and uh, how everything looked coming out of the box. But let me know what you guys think about this one down below. Did you pick up the Switch Lite? Okay, and uh, are you thinking about it maybe for the holidays even or as a gift? Seems like a $200, possibly, by the way, it might even get cheaper down the road after seeing a Wall Street Journal article talking about that. Uh, it could become a very, very compelling gift at holiday time going forward. Make sure you guys like the video if you enjoyed it. Dislike it if not. Check me out on the main channel where we break down the turquoise switch later on today. And I'll see you guys next time.